Mr. Odum Udi, Chairman, Presidential Communications Team, and other members here, uh, our colleagues in the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's event. Today's is the 69th edition of these briefings organized by the Presidential Communications Team. According to the mandate of the Federal Ministry of Environment, the Ministry strives to ensure environmental protection, natural resources conversation, conservation, and sustainable development. And since its establishment, the Ministry has been impacting on of environmental consciousness in the minds of Nigerians, as well as interfacing with the global environmental best practices. The Ministry has focused on involving innovative strategies that emphasize the use of environmental re-engineering as a veritable tool for job creation, poverty eradication, ensuring food security, encouraging sustainable economic development and general improvement in the livelihood of the Nigerian populace. You will agree with me that when we talk about environment today, the main topical issue is climate change and its ramifications. At today's briefing, as I said, the 69th edition, we have the Honorable Minister of Environment, Mohamed Hazan Abdullahi, joined by his Minister of State, Mr. Odum Udi, and the Minister will speak with us on the strides being undertaken by the President Muhammadu Bari led administration in the core area of climate change and in the environment sector. He will also highlight plans being in place by the Ministry to manage Nigeria's environmental challenges. Now, let me sound a note of warning. The Minister, before appointment as Minister of uh, Science and Tech, before this one, he was Secretary to the State Government in Nasara State, and is an advocate and solicitor of the Supreme Court. He was Commissioner for Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Nasara State. So, report what he says. <laughs> oh, report what he says. <laughs> I will not say more than that. <laughs> <laughs> On this note, I would like to invite the Honorable Minister to please come and speak with us for about 20 minutes while we fire him on what he has spoken to us about. The, my elder brother and senior special assistant to Mr. President on the on media, Aladi Gerbeshuhu, and distinguished members of the State House Press Corps. Sorry, my omission. My, my honorable colleague, the Honorable Minister of State for Environment, and the Director of Planning, Research, and Statistics. I've been introduced, but it's good that I'm before a friendly fire. So I have, I have no issues here. Uh, so can we start speaking on, with the slide? I may speak to some part of the slide, and I'll also probably speak extempo on some issues, uh, particularly with regards to the role of Mr. President uh, and the impact he has made, both within the country and outside the country in terms of uh, uh, climate change and other environment-related issues. Uh, let me skip the mission and vision. The, the anchor has mentioned part of what we do as part of our mission and, and vision for the environment. Um, these are policies that, have, uh, that came on stream since Mr. President came on board as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and, in fact, the number one climate change advocate. We have policy on battery waste. We have 
We have the National Police on Battery Waste uh, Management. We have the National Environmental Sanitation Policy, which was reviewed uh, last three, four years. We have the National Drought and Desalination Policy. We are also reviewing that. Um, and we have the National Drought Plan. We have the National Action Plan on Mercury Management. And we have also developed a national strategy to combat wildlife and forest crime. Um, these are essentially uh, policies that deals with one, waste management and uh, circular economy, and then two, also deals with our 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 efforts towards um, mitigation in terms of drought and desertification, and also conservation of our 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 biodiversity. And then, of course, the national policies to combat wildlife crimes. You are quite aware that most of the uh, uh, animal species that we have uh, in the country are going extinct because of the, evidence, because of the activities of poachers and uh, in terms of afforestation, uh, our forests by illegal loggers. So what we did is to develop a national policy to combat wildlife and forest crime. Uh, it is a multi-pronged approach that uh, is being coordinated by the Ministry of Environment, but with a lot of stakeholder uh, engagement and involvement, particularly the customs, the armed forces, the Nigerian police, um, the licensed um, uh, wood exporters, and uh, some, in some, some ministries. Um, so if we are going to speak to our achievement, I don't even know where to start, but uh, let me say that Nigeria is in the forefront of this, what we call LDN, the Land Degradation Neutrality. Um, it's a global, uh, you, know, um, you know, movement where countries are committing to setting at least per annum, which is a very tall ambition of 15.3% per annum of land recovery within uh, their ecosystem. Now, last year, when I represented the president at the, at the Commonwealth um, meeting of ministers of environment, we signed what we call the Commonwealth Land uh, Charter, which also focuses on giving emphasis on, on, on recovery of degraded land. We are targeting about between one to four million hectares of land uh, as our commitment in Nigeria. Uh, but so far, we have uh, been able to do what we call the AFLRI initiative uh, with the planting of additional trees uh, in the country. Mr. President committed to planting about 25 million trees as at uh, last two years when he addressed ONGA on issues of climate change. Uh, let me say that that is a very modest, uh, you know, ambition because our colleagues in other African countries, they are doing between 50, uh, between 50 to 100 million trees. If my elder brother will remember when we were in, um, in Addis Ababa, uh, the Ethiopian government committed, if you remember very well, sir, Ethiopian government committed to about planting about 100 million trees in the next uh, two, three years, and they are on course together. So the 25 million, um, uh, you know, commitment by Mr. President is quite modest. He understands that our country is a, is a federal system of government. Most of the lands are in the states and local governments. The only place where we can drive this process aggressively is, is in the FCT. So that's why I think Mr. President has been so modest so that he doesn't encroach you know, within the rights of, of other states. But the policy envisages that we are going to engage the state government uh, so that they can buy in to the tree planting campaign, which was launched by Mr. President last year when he hosted uh, the Council of Ministers of the Pan-African Great Green Wall here in Abuja, in this vicinity, where he, he through the vice president, launch the initiative of a tree planting campaign. So the essence is to invite state government and, um, and local government to buy in to the program. I'm glad to say that 
between then and now, we have planted over five, 5 million trees. But let me make it clear, the 5 million trees is not just planted by the federal government agencies. No, it's an aggregation of what state governments are also doing in terms of uh, tree planting activities at their various states. So when you aggregate them between last year and, and today, we have been able to plant uh, about uh, 500 million trees. The challenge we have is that of one, urbanization, two, um, agricultural activities, three, as we, you know, um, try to, you know, deploy a lot of infrastructure, maybe road, rest services, etc., etc., et cetera, we also encroach into our uh, land and biodiversity resources. And in the process, we're also losing more trees. As we plant, these human activities is in the on our, on our capacity to have a very robust uh, afforestation program. Um, next slide. Okay, part, part of, um, um, uh, let me say a corollary to to the, to the initiative of government to do land recovery and also um, plant trees is the role of government, particularly Nigerian government, and particularly Mr. President, as the chairman conference of head of states and governments of the Pan-African Great Green Wall. Uh, you are quite aware that the Pan-African Great Green Wall initiative is meant to achieve about two or three things. One, to support um, countries within the Sahel Belt, build what we call um, you know, uh, a tree belt. In other words, we want to build and construct and plant trees across the Sahelian Belt so as to fight desert encroachment. That is one. Two, to also develop uh, some community resilience uh, uh, programs that will support communities, adapt, and, and uh, adapt to the challenges of the hardship caused by desertification and climate change. Uh, and then thirdly, to ensure that through scientific approach, we remediate uh, what we call dry lands and, uh, and, and the past receding wetlands uh, are recovered. If you recall, in particularly in Yobe State, for instance, there are a number of oases that are going extinct because of one, desertification, and two, human activities, and then three, uh, the challenges caused by, by insecurity. So the program of the Pan-African Great Green Wall uh, is to support uh, these land recovery activities. Now, how do we achieve that? Um, under the leadership of Mr. President, uh, he has initiated in concert with, with his colleagues, his brother head of states of the Pan-African Great Rural Member Countries, uh, advise specific national agencies of Great Green Walls of each country to develop what you call um, action plans for remediation and land recovery uh, so that they, they can be supported through what we call the Great Green Wall Accelerator which has been supported by the One Planet Summit, uh, being pushed by President Macron of France. They, they, the One Planet Summit pledged about 18.6 billion euros to support the activities of the initiative of the Pan-African Great Green Wall. And uh, Mr. President has been able to synergize with the, um, the agency at, 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 at the international level to ensure that countries access these funds. We are at a stage where uh, Nigeria will likely draw funds to support the activities of the National Agency for the Nigerian National Agency for the Great Green Wall uh, that is working at the frontline states of the North, particularly Yobe, uh, Borno, Jigawa, Kano, uh, Sokoto, to uh, plant these trees and then uh, also support uh, community resilience. They are also developing plants, or trees rather, that are resilient, you know, to the, 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 the hard 
and sunny weather of the frontline states. Now, part of what we launched when, I, when the president hosted the Council of Ministers of, uh, of Environment of member states of the Pan-African Great Green World is to, is to launch a program, I mean a, a, a product, a, a plant that one is resilient, two can grow within um, a, a few seconds. No, no, no few seconds, please. <laughs> grow within a few weeks, we stand the pressure of heat, and then it itself develops some moisture around its roots, so that it can stand the, the heat. Uh, so we are deploying that through the National Agency of the Green Wall, once we get the, the finances from the One Planet Summit. Uh, so I think I have done some little bit of afforestation. Um, next slide. Uh, impact of climate change? Well, um, I think the clear uh, examples, you know, uh, signposts, you know, of the impact of climate change in Nigeria that uh, can be seen by every discerning person is one, that as we speak today now, we are facing desertification. As we speak today now, we have a very serious issues of coastal erosion. As we speak today now, we have um, challenges of flooding. These are issues that are glaring and clearly indicates that Nigeria is also um, suffering from the impact of climate change. So the approach of, of the federal government is through its um, NDC to develop uh, a response that is consistent with our priorities, uh, which include having a framework for sustainable development, which carries everyone uh, in line with the, the SDG, the SDG um, uh, TOGA of carrying everybody along. And then, of course, the development energy transition for economic growth, and then our mitigation and adaptation policies. Uh, that have been developed over time, which, uh, which was uh, developed in conjunction with other stakeholders in the climate space. Uh, of course, we are aware that uh, part of what we are doing is Mr. President approved in the inauguration of the National Council on Climate Change and also uh, appointed the first, the, the, the pioneer DG, who has since developed an action plan. And as, uh, as at last meeting of Council of uh, the, the climate change. Mr. President met a number of significant approvals that are going to impact on our approach to mitigation and adaptation uh, in, in terms of challenges uh, on climate change. For instance, the Climate Change Council presented to Mr. President and the Council uh, what you call an abridged action plan, you know, for the next one, two years, you know, uh, that will look at all facets of challenges on climate change and address them. And then there are also, the policy also envisage, as approved, also envisage what you call uh, the development of the Nigerian Carbon Market Initiative, which also translates to the carbon market trading schemes, which have been developed. Now, um, apparently, uh, there, is, there is, you know, a future uh, globally in terms of using um, carbon initiatives to address climate change uh, challenges by, by each countries. So a, a, a number of countries, for instance, Gabon, Senegal, Kenya, and, and Nigeria at the moment are at the forefront uh, in developing this strategy and then developing the framework. You know, it's a new uh, concept and within the the climate change lexicon. So everybody is looking at own unique, unique um, situation and developing what is unique for itself and advantageous for, for its own domestic uh, priorities. Uh, next. Yes, we've also been able to, we've also been able to, uh, part of our initiative to support 
um, green project. We developed what we call sovereign green bond. Uh, because it was, in the first instance, it was a test case. The volume was very small, it was just 10 billion. Then it was um, later, in the second issuance, we increased it to about 15 billion, you know, to see how efficient and practicable the green projects can be supported by the sovereign green bonds. So having seen the successes of the green bond, we have now enlarged uh, the quantum of the next issuance program. Now we are going to do with the Mr. President's approval, we are going to issue the third tranche of about 50 billion naira to support uh, green projects. Now, these green projects are, you know, are located in several ministries. You know, so what we did is to look at, within the framework of the budget of, um, of the MDS, to look at projects that can qualify as green projects, then we, then we fund them directly uh, through the green bonds. Uh, they don't have to be funded by the usual uh, budgetary provisions. So we've identified a number of projects scattered around um, the Ministry of Power where we're supporting uh, solar deployment, uh, solar energy in Ministry of Power. Then we're also looking at um, a Ministry of Agriculture. We're looking at um, some land recovery issues, you know, uh, with, with NALDA to ensure that, you know, lands are made uh, cultivatable. And then we've also identified some projects under means of transport where we're going to support um, uh, the transportation infrastructure. courtesy of Mr. President is that there is a new organization called the Climate Commission of the Sahel Region with the headquarters in Niger Republic, in Niamey, Niger Republic. Their, their objectives are closely aligned with the objectives of the Pan-African Great Green Wall, but limited to the countries within the uh, vicinity of Lake Chad. So these countries are uh, Nigeria, Niger, um, Chad, Cameroon, and I think Burkina Faso. But other countries, seeing the advantage of the Sahel Climate Commission, uh, they are also keen into it and, you know, keen to, to join us. But one key takeaway, one key thing that Mr. President did is that at the last, um, at the last um, high level meeting of the Climate Commission of the Sahel region in, in, in Addis Ababa on the 17th of February, uh, Mr. President was able to secure the siting of the headquarters of the Sahel Climate Fund to Abuja in, in, in Nigeria. I feel that is a major uh, game changer because that means Abuja will now begin to. Uh, take it part of place as a center of climate finance. That is the major uh, achievement of Mr. President, going out to meet his brother head of state and be able to take away this to Nigeria. Uh, again, just um, this week, I guess, but prior to that, last, last year, Mr. President wrote to the National Assembly to get their concurrence to designate some parks as uh, national parks, essentially to enhance our biodiversity uh, conservation efforts. Uh, I'm glad to mention that the Senate, uh, I think two days ago, uh, passed uh, a motion, essentially um, concurring with Mr. President to designate the following additional parks as national parks. One is Alao National Park in Naja State. Two is Apoi National Park in Bayelsa. Three is Edumenum National Park, also in Bayelsa. We have the 
Galkuri National Park in Kano. We have the Hadeja Wetlands National Park in Jigawa. We have the Kempe National Park in Kwara State. We have the Marhai National Park in Nasarawa State. We have the Oba Hill National Park in Oshun. We have the Kogo National Park in Kasina. Now, this essentially keys into Mr. President's vision of having as much national parks as possible to support our biodiversity uh, conservation. And then, um, also again, in, in the federal government's continuing efforts to, to support land remediation activities, to support activities of farmers, uh, particularly in arid areas. Uh, the federal government, in conjunction with the World Bank, now floated what we call the ACRISA program. Um, the ACRISA program pulled out uh, about $700 million to support, again, land reclamation, wetlands recovery, and oasis uh, recovery. And then with a bit of uh, some work along the lecture to open up uh, the clock that stops or has been inhibiting flow of water from the Hadeja River to, to Lake Chad. So these are part of what um, we are doing. And of course, you are quite aware that just yesterday on a going cleanup, um, uh, uh, we've been able to, you know, propose a number of projects that um, uh, I like what Channel said yesterday in, in their report that with this, with, with, with having been able to clear some of the backlog of these cases that we have in the court, we are now set to begin implementation uninhibited of some of the projects that we've, out, we've, that we've outlined in, in, a, in Ogoni, particularly the remediation efforts that we are doing, then the mangrove restoration, the 100 bed hospital, the center of excellence, the Ogoni power project. Uh, let me say that under the, the UNEP, United Nations Environmental Program, uh, it's not just about the remediation. There's a component for livelihood, cottage industries, and then, uh, and then three, the center of excellence to support activities and research on remediation and contamination uh, knowledge. So uh, I think, um, I think I have, uh, to some extent, let me see close towards the last four or five pages of the slide. These are all areas in Ogoni that we are working on. This is one site I've, I've personally visited. You, you can see from the devastation, there is no way, this is supposed to be a river. Look at, look at how contaminated the place is. It's completely oily. So there's no way they can plant, there's no way they can fish. It's, so the impact is um, also in terms of their health and well-being. That is why we have to have this hospital. We're also providing water, uh, clean water, uh, as approved by Mr. President, to support you know, access to water, access to clean water for the people. These are part of the water project. Next, 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 next. Oh, thank you. I uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That was um Thank you, sir. That was the presentation by the Honorable Minister of Environment. Um, okay, while the Honorable Minister was speaking. The chairman of the presidential communications team came in and gently went to sit at the back. We are not used to having him at the back. He's waving me that you should let him be. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should just come here, Oga. We are used to seeing you here. Okay, okay. Tolu, Oga said you should carry on. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir, Honorable Minister. Um, usually, when you speak like when. People come here to speak, we listen, we wrap attention. And um, 
The next thing we will have people, we we'll see people raising up their hands that ah, they don't agree with you. No, no. So let's give them opportunity now to. But I told you it's a friendly fire. Yeah, it will yeah. be a friendly fire. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so, who, how many people? Um, Horatius will take the first question. Andona will take the second question. Anule will take the third question. Oh, um, Mr. C, uh, Cyril will take the fourth question. Are you ready, Sam? Yes. Okay. Ready. Go ahead. Please take the first Good afternoon, Honorable Minister. I've got a privilege to have you beside me today, sir. <laughs> Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Horatio Segua. I write for the Bridge News. Horatio Segua, I write for the Bridge News. Sir, the question I want to ask is, I've been privileged in the last two and a half years to work with the Minister of State for Petroleum. And one of the challenges we have is this issue of energy transition, investment in fossil fuel, and others. And when we go to international fora, you hear Minister of Environment speaking against investment in fossil fuel. And the Ministry of Petroleum Resources advocates for investment in fossil fuel. And there we have discordant voices. One speaking this way, the other one speaking the other way. Meanwhile, our sources of revenue, our major source of revenue is oil. In this very confusing state, do we have a uniform transition program, energy transition program that we have so that we will go to international fora. We will not be talking at um, we are talking with discordant voices. That's just what I want to clear, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, good afternoon, Honorable Minister. My name is Alan Duna Inga from Silver Bear Television. So my question has to do with, uh, recently, the governor of Anambra State uh, made a statement that Anambra State is the erosion capital. Is the, the erosion capital of Nigeria. Um, I actually noticed that on the slide, though you didn't speak on it, I noticed I saw certain pictures about erosion and you captured certain states. So I'd like to know in specific terms, what is the federal government doing to intervene in these issues? Thank you. As Honorable Minister, my name is Dr. Anule Emanuel. I write for AFP News Agency. Honorable Minister, when you were speaking through the projector, I I noticed one of the, pol the policies that you said that your ministry has put in place, which is the National Environment Sanitation Policy. Well, Mr. I'm, I'm actually uh, taken aback because uh, I'm shocked to hear that we have a policy like this in place, reason being that uh, this consciousness among Nigerians about sanitation, personal sanitation in terms of environment, has seriously diminished nationally. In fact, right here in Abuja, we have a very close satellite town, Nyanya. Uh, I'm aware, Honorable Minister, you know that at some point, the United Nations habitat described that settlement as a slump, right here in the Federal Capital uh, Territory. Now, um, I'm just wondering why the federal government will have in place such a policy and we never have a drive, conscious drive, to push for that national consciousness of Nigerians seeing in themselves that they need to, you know, carry on sanitation, maybe on daily, because in the past we used to see in, uh, monthly sanitations, government pushing it, encouraging Nigerians to come to keep, keep the environment safe. How come this policy in place, is in place and we don't see your ministry driving that? Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Chijoke Okoroko. I report for the news agency of Nigeria. 
Yeah, uh, talking about national uh, climate change action, sometime last year, the, the vice president, while addressing uh, international stakeholders on climate change, so somewhere in, I think in New York, made a proposal for debt for climate swap deal, a situation where debts of poorer nations are, are, are forgiven or written off in exchange for their commitment that the, the debt service repayment will be channeled to national climate action programs. Now, what, what's the state of that proposal? Is it gaining traction? Is it being pushed? Is it being pushed? Is it being followed up? Now, again, the, the rents are coming. Is there any action, any effort being made, any plans underway to mitigate or forestall flooding again? Thank you. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Okay. Um, on the first question about energy transition and whether there are discordant tunes between the Federal Ministry of Environment and, and Petroleum, um, let me say that there is no any controversy and um, we're all in sync. The position of Mr. President as the Minister of Petroleum is that Nigeria commits to net zero by 2060. So in the process of doing that, we're de-emphasizing fossil fuel. But we have also emphasized within the, within the framework of our, trans, uh, of our energy transition plan that it is going to be used as a transition fuel. Uh, so, much as we want to intervene and correct some of these anomalies, we are also um, inhibited by funding issues. Again, that was the basis upon which the federal government also uh, created new map, you know, to ensure that these challenges of erosion are handled and uh, faced in virtually every the challenges of erosion issues. We've approached um, European Investment Bank and we've been able to get about 200 million euros, you know, to be able to bring to closure areas where there are huge gaps in terms of uh, <laughs> these challenges of, um, of erosion, particularly in the, 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 the southeast states of uh, uh, Adambra, Imo, and, uh, and uh, Enugu State. So we're doing our best to support them but we also call on the states to also live up to their, to their responsibilities and utilize those funds they get for ecological funds effectively. This way we can, we can, we can, we can, we can support ourselves. On the issue of national environmental sanitation policy, yes, as a ministry, ours is to drive this policy and get the buy-in of, uh, of stakeholders. Usually what we do when we have these policies um, drawn up, we have a process called the validation process. In the validation process, we invite all stakeholders, we invite state government, particularly Ministry of Environment, and agencies that are in charge of sanitation, so that we can together go through uh, those documents through the National Council of Environment. So once these once this documents are validated, now they become a document of all stakeholders in the sanitation space, not just the Ministry of Environment. It is expected that jointly we we'll, we we'll implement the, the the policy. But you and me are aware that over time, state, state governments have politicized the process of sanitation exercises and and uh, and programs. You find one state banning exercises for sanitation on some days. You find another state, you know, um, instituting uh, sanitation exercises. So there are discordant tunes in this respect. Because again, of the nature of our arrangement as a federal entity, we can't force it down the throat of state government. Now, in the FCT, uh, where perhaps we could have some, you know, some level of control, we are always liaising with um, the Abuja Environmental, uh, uh, what do they call our office? Protection agency. Huh? Agency, exactly. Abuja Environmental Protection Agency. You know, to see how. Uh, for instance, we have shown some degree of concerns uh, with respect to particularly plastic pollution and plastic waste. 
within the environs of Abuja. And then um, the activities of, uh, of, of, of uh, developers, where they have been trying to encroach in the, in the, in the Jabi Lake and you know, dumping waste there. Uh, I'm glad to inform you that we have formed an alliance with the FCT and we are set to inspect through a joint tax force to look at those areas and see what we can do to enforce, to enforce sanitation in Abuja. But even at that, we had to collaborate with the FCT because they own the land. Um, on the depth for climate swap or depth for climate, you know, uh, equity swap, it's a novel innovation and um, it's actually work in progress uh, because it has to it has to work with a lot of data provided by your NDCs. And um, so it is still on course, it's, it's, it's work in progress. And uh, the Vice President has set up a committee to examine you know, uh, the modalities and, and the framework in which uh, such policy can be, can be driven. However, like I said, it requires a lot of data which we are working on to support uh, the policy. So I don't want to preempt the committee of the Vice President. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Second match. Minister, understand the last question. Which one is that? Oh, mitigating flooding. Okay, you recall that um, last year, Mr. President set up a high-powered committee uh, being chaired by the Minister for Water Resources to examine, one, the causes of incessant flooding to recommend, you know, um, solutions that are sustainable and then provide also uh, the cost, you know, of such a solution. Now, again, part of the challenge we have in terms of flooding is that usually uh, the Ministry of Environment has what we call an early warning signs uh, notices to states. And the NIMET also does that. And we advise the states, particularly states that we think they are uh, flooding prone, flood prone, to advise them to take steps uh, you know, to either move those within uh, the, the, the enclave of streams or rivers or lakes, you know, to the, the upland. But because, like I said earlier in one of my briefings, because of reasons of revenue, state government issue notices, uh, sorry, certificates of occupancies to settlements within, you know, those areas because of the revenue that trickles in from certificate of occupancies and, and, and out of us, uh, and the process you know, exposing uh, these people to the vagaries and the challenges of, 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 of flooding. Um, we will continue to provide those early warning signs. We will continue to sensitize them. We will continue to engage them to ensure that uh, you know, they, they take notice of this and take steps to mitigate against uh, the possible challenge of, of flooding. And then the, we have sat as a committee set up by Mr. President and brought out uh, a number of uh, solutions on sustainable basis that will advise the federal government on how to mitigate uh, uh, you know, these, ch these challenges of flooding. But I, again, the committee, as you know, is uh, comprised of both state government, some local government, Algon, and, and federal agencies. So we believe that once Mr. President okays the, the, the report and the recommendations, now we should be able to roll out a very uh, robust plan that will meet together against future occurrences of, uh, uh, of flooding. And then don't also forget that issues of flooding 
um, it's been handled by not only the Ministry of Environment, but Ministry of Water Resources and Agriculture, and, and to some extent, uh, aviation. So it's a multi-agency uh, approach to the solutions of flooding. I hope I try to answer you. Thank you. Um, second batch. And last batch. Yes. <laughs> Farouk one, Choji two, any other one? Uh, you didn't raise your hands before, no? Um, business day. No, Gloria will be last batch. Son. And uh, I think we should just take the, take the six questions now. Six? Okay. Yeah. And run it off there. <laughs> OK. Who is the fifth person? No, I'm not taking it. No, it's OK. I, my, my colleagues are beginning to trickle in. So if I have issues, yes. some of them can come up. Gloria is number six. Who is number five? Who? Daily Trust. OK. OK, sir. Try. Who is number one? Good afternoon, sir. My name is Hassan Umar Farouk. I report for Liberty Radio and Television, sir. Sir, it's quite commendable when you mention the number of trees. Uh, the president uh, made commitment that uh, you even said it's a modest uh, promise. But traveling from to, to gas now, we soon put it back to firewoods because <laughs> if things continue this way. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Still on that lighter mood. Uh, my name is Timothy Choji. I report for Voice of Nigeria. It's rainy season quite all right, but there is this heat wave I'm experiencing these days. What could be responsible for that? <laughs> okay. Honorable Minister, my name is Tony Ailemen. I write for Business Day. One of the major challenges that this administration uh, tried to face at inception was in how to um, tackle the issue of the effect of climate change on the Lake Chad uh, region and its implication for the wider economic activities in that region. What exactly have we been able to do to change the situation there? And how difficult is it to really get that place? What do you need to get that lake charge region sorted out so that life and economic activities that affect millions of people in that area can be tackled? Thank you. Yeah, Honorable Minister, I'm Muidi Nolani, I write for Daily Trust newspaper. Uh, you earlier said your ministry is working with the Ministry of Agriculture on the issue of reclamation and rehabilitation of degraded land. We just want you to bring us up to speed on the level of progress so far. What have you done so far? Yeah, good afternoon. My name is Gloria Umezuke from Channels Television. So um, we saw a report that UNICEF revealed that Nigeria ranks second out of 163 countries globally with the highest risk of exposure to climate and environmental threats. And climate obviously, and what? climate and environmental threats. So it's really no surprise because we still have, you know, lingering issues of gas flaring and the protracted cleanup of Oguni land and so, so many other issues as such. What does this ranking, what does it portend for Nigeria? Thank you. That's all? Okay. Okay, let me, let me um, 
On the question of tree planting and the challenges of um, you know continuing or continuous rather um, felling of trees for firewood, for charcoal, etc., etc. Uh, let me call on my colleague, the DG of the Forestry Research Institute of Nigeria, to speak on the timber legality standard. DG, please. He is Professor Adepoju, the DG of uh, Forestry Research of Nigeria. Benny. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, not because I am part of this administration, but I think uh, no any other administration has done better than this current administration in the area of tackling charcoal and afforestation. Uh, the first, I've been in the forest sector for more than 20 years, and it's just within the last three, four years, we've been able to plant yearly a minimum of at least five million trees. But uh, when we're facing uh, banning of uh, our product uh, by the international, uh, that's what we call CITES, uh, which inform uh, the banning of uh, a particular species we call Pterocarpus orinaceus. Uh, the Honorable Minister moved at once and considered a committee which produced a report we call Timber Legality Standard uh, Document, which he has launched and is active now. And uh, there's already a task force. But the challenge we are facing uh, about deforestation and charcoal issue has to do with what the uh, Honorable Minister is already engaging the Nigeria Governors Forum because of the Land Use Act. Uh, federal is just a policy uh, provider. They don't have entire control of state uh, uh, government lands. Uh, so we're trying to work out a modality which Kaduna State that key, key in uh, uh, properly. Kaduna has uh, degraded, degraded some uh, hectares of land, I don't have the number here, to the federal now to plant, and which we're working with various local government in Kaduna State. And so we're projecting other states will follow su suit and so that we can go around the entire country. That's about uh, the issue of the timber legality standard document and the charcoal issue. Thank you very much. But what we also did again to further put some level of control uh, is that we have what we call um, we have what we call uh, apart from the tinger, uh, timber sorry legality standard we have a committee of what what do you call it what do you call it the, the NFG you know which is essentially to track uh, endemic areas where there is so much pressure on our forest. Uh, after tracking it, you know, raise uh, the red flag and then engage those communities who are there uh, and indeed the government so that a solution can be found to have some kind of, you know, some level of arrest of the continuous, um, uh, you know, challenge to our forest. What the DG refused to tell you is that the activities of people in the charcoal business, with all due respect, is being supported by a number of powerful people at the sub-national level. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if we try to do some level of enforcement, they say, look, we own this territory. You are federal government. You cannot come and enforce your, your, your rules or policies on us. So that is part of what is the challenge in terms of you know, controlling these activities. You know? But in spite of that, the tax force is still there, going after some of them you know, uh, on ad hoc basis, trying to find out who and who are involved, who, who licensed you, who we are supplying to. You know? So we're doing our best to carry it as much as possible. On the heat wave, well, I think it's a consequence of uh, what we're going through today globally uh, on climate change. Gas? Oh, oh, the price of gas. The price of gas. I would recommend you to my colleague, uh, Mr. Silva, the, the, the oral minister of, of state for petroleum. 
I'll recommend that question to him. So I'll, I'll, I'll invite you to discuss with him on the price of gas. So on the heat wave, I'm sure that we, we, are all, we all understand what we are going through at the moment. Um, human activities have uh, greatly impacted on the ozone layer. So it has opened up. There's so much heat flowing down, which is part of the climate change uh, challenge we're talking about. Uh, so much gas flaring, like, uh, like Gloria mentioned earlier in her question. So much gas flaring, um, so much deforestation going on, so much dislocation of our biodiversity. So, so there are so much activities that are going that impacted on our climate. So I don't know. That's why the federal government is taking uh, what we call the adaptation and mitigation uh, you know, policies to see how uh, not only live with it, but live around it you know, with, within the confines of nature. On the chart region, let me, let me, let me, let me align the question on chart region and, uh, and Gloria's question on, on UNICEF conclusions uh, about the threats of climate and environment to, to Nigeria. You are, you are quite aware that part of what we're facing in, in Lake Chad is the drying up of the lake. In the process, the livelihood of a lot of people around the Lake Chad region is um, going extinct as well. Uh, the, the, the fish farmers no longer fish, again, because of security challenges. The, the farming activities that happen, usually, um, like dry season farming, no longer uh, happens now because of the impact of the drying lake and, and security challenges. So there are climate-induced migration, climate-induced security challenges, and climate-induced um, uh, maybe hunger. So all these have contributed, as it were, to Nigeria's challenges and vulnerability when it comes to uh, our, our situation as it is today. But however, I mentioned to you earlier that Mr. President has, has, has approached the One, Climate, the One Planet Summit you know, to open a window of finance to support the activities of our agencies you know, towards um, having mitigation uh, activities. For instance, developing resilience for our communities and supporting their livelihood programs in terms of either fishing, either farming, or, or uh, local transportation. And then also, we are also working on, 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 on land recovery using NALDA and Minister of Agriculture and programs like, uh, like ACRISAL and, um, and uh, the PAGW. So generally, I think it's a challenge that uh, we are working headlong to see how we can face it uh, within the within the confines of our limited resources. In terms of what? Oh, in terms of quantum? No, the the action plan envisage. Uh, between 200 to 700 million USD, you know, spread across a number of interventions across the states that are affected, you know, within the frontline states. You see, the action plans are developed by each national agency of each member state. Now they are being collected on the aggregate, and then we find the total, whether they fit in within the, the general um, uh, total of 18.6 um, billion. So once we aggregate them, we will now probably allocate to each country, depending on, on its priorities, 
an action plan uh, the figures. So it's very difficult for me now at the moment to say that accurately these are the figures assigned to each state. There are 11 member states, Senegal, Nigeria, um, Ethiopia, uh, Burkina Faso, uh, Niger Republic, Chad, etc., etc. But I think that our plan, our action plan as developed by the National, the National Agency for the Great Green Wall appears to be more robust and more practical because they have been on ground uh, for a long time, I've understood the challenges uh, of, uh, of the Sahel region, particularly when it comes to oasis recovery and wetlands recovery, and then uh, the tree planting across the Sahel belt. So we're looking at between 300 to 700 million dollars. You know, Gloria, you reported accurately yesterday. <laughs> you reported accurately yesterday that we're inhibited by legal encumbrance. We barely managed to get these cases out of the way between last week and yesterday and, and day before yesterday. Uh, so at the moment we are back uh, to the trenches, we are going to roll out the implementation plan. I can assure you that within the next uh, couple of days, I assure you, Mr. President is going to do the, the, the flag up or the, the, the groundbreaking of the Center of Excellence for remediation and then the power project and the hospital. Already the, the, the remediation of the shoreline is ongoing. So it's just for us to, to resume from where we stopped, where we are stopped by the court. I assure you that we are on course. Uh, the inhibition has been taken away out of our, 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 our you know, uh, face. So we are, we are quite on course to, to deliver Mr. President's directive. He has always advised that our eyes must be on the ball. And that is why when these challenges were ongoing, we focused on first, you know, trying to get these orders vacated, these legal inhibitions vacated so that we can really we can refocus ourselves towards uh, implementation. So we're on course. You tell us how much you on remediation? Yes. Is the PC here? Okay, we, we have spent, um, can I give it the data later so that I don't, I don't. Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's, yeah. Gloria, you can get that later. Um, shortly, when the DG of Frame was reacting to the question, he said, he used one acronym, NFTA. NFTA. What does that mean, please? The Forest Plus One. Let's have Forest Plus One. Let's have Forest Plus One. Okay, that's clear. Chairman, go ahead. Well, we want to thank on behalf of the presidential communications team, the Honorable Minister and the Minister of State and their team, you know, for the feats they are recording in combating harsh effects of climate change in the country and the commendable efforts they are making to improve uh, our own environment. This has been a first class presentation and we commend you, Honorable Minister, for, for doing this. Again, to thank uh, the Honorable Minister of State, Udi Odim, for the support he's also given doing his own part in all of these things. We also want to thank those who have accompanied the Honorable Minister, including Mr. Charles Ikea, the Director in the Office of the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Stanley Jonah, the Director PRS, Planning Research Statistics, and uh, the professor who took uh, the microphone, Adepoju, who is the Director General of the Forestry Research Institute of Nigeria. We also have uh, Dr. Yusuf Bukarmaina, the DG of the National Great Green Wall uh, Project. Uh, Musa Idris O of NOSDRA, which is the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency. 
and the director of press, Ibrahim Haruna, that's him there. Uh, Amodu Anjuma, the chief information officer, and Olishegun Shogbola, the PA media to the honorable minister. I also thank those on our part. Femi missed the start. He had an engagement on the president's side, so he came in late and quietly sat at the back of the room. Uh, Oge is the hands-on person for this uh, uh, process. Uche, uh, SA, SA to the president. Uh, Bjorn, the director of media in the office, and uh, all of the media staff, uh, technical support and all of that. And we also want to thank you and commend all of you, the correspondents who have faithfully reported on all of these things with the aptitude and great competence. And we count, to, count on you to do even more dealing with this very dynamic and charming minister we have of environment. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a group photography.